Hello. All right. So welcome to another special episode, solo episode this week of uh, Pure Sessions with your girl Lana and Pure. How's everybody doing today? Um, so today, as you can see, I am solo. It's been a minute um, since it's just been me, myself, and I. I should have had that playing in the background. That would have been a dope intro. But um, today's special episode, it is episode 54. And this episode is titled, uh, What is Your Love Language? And I feel like that topic is kind of like a universal thing. Like people kind of pick a section of the five different love languages. There's others, but I'm going to talk about the main five, at least the ones that I know, that um, kind of come around the conversation. And I feel like sometimes I'm like two out of the five. I know they say it's supposed to be like one of them, but I feel like I'm two out of the five. In the beginning when I was like, first doing the research and learning about it and and talking to people I felt like okay I'm every one of these things but then I'm like how can I be every one of these things it doesn't make sense so look let me dig deep and look into myself and feel and just reflect and be like okay I am this and this makes more sense because you know sometimes we lie to ourselves and we just say we're a bunch of other things when we know really what we want and what we need and what we'll, we'll tolerate what we won't tolerate so um, I have the, um, the different love languages, the ugh, different love languages up. So I'm just going to read the five of them off right now. So what is the different five love languages? Love can be in any kind of form. Which one is your favorite love language or which one are you? So different love languages are acts of service, words of affirmation, giving gifts, quality time, and physical touch. And, you know, you can kind of make your own definition of each, but what's here is um, active service. You know, you express love through actions, doing different things that shows your partner that you care about them and that you're there for them. Words of affirmation as well expresses love through words. So if you're a person who likes, you know, words versus actions, that's kind of what you are. If you want to hear the I love yous and if you want to hear the I miss yous, you're that love language. There's giving gifts, you know, expressing love through gifts and material things. So if you want, like, cupcakes or presents or clothes or things like that, you're kind of that person. There's nothing wrong with being a materialistic person because everybody likes gifts now and then. But also, I feel like there should be, like, a balance in between how many gifts you should get or, better yet, the the level of materialistic because there's people who I know who just all they want is just material things clothes shoes bags cars etc they don't want any real connection to things like that so if you're like that that's cool so that would be your love language which would be receiving and giving gifts there's quality time you know expresses love through spending time together so you know you guys can go to the mall go to the movies Netflix and chill actually Netflix and chill um, read a book together, take walks, things like that. That's quality time. And the last one is physical touch. So, you know, expressing love through a simple touch. Now, with that one, a little tricky because a lot of people, when they hear physical touch, they just automatically go to relations. But it can also just be holding hands. It could be a massage. It could be a foot rub. It could be a kiss. It could be just, you know, if you're tired or not feeling well, they're just rubbing your head or, or rubbing your stomach or just making you feel at ease. And for me, out of reading all these and knowing me, my personality, knowing how I am, I probably, in the beginning, like when I was younger, I can definitely say I'm words of affirmation because, you know, when I was younger, getting into the dating love scene, I was like, I always wanted, like, I'm like, I always want to hear you say, I love you. Please tell me, say, I want to hear you say, I miss me, you know, all the other stuff. But now, Knowing how I am and as I'm older and more mature and more confident, you know, with myself and loving myself and things like that, I'm really probably just quality time. <laughs> I think I'm at that level where I just want to just spend time with the person and just, you know, enjoy their presence, enjoy their company because I'm at the point where I could sit in a room with somebody, like if you're dating somebody, whatever, and they're like on their phone or watching TV and I can be in the same room reading a book or doing my adult 
word puzzles, which I have right here. I have like six or seven of them. These. You can do in these and be fine with it. There was a point in time where I would be like, why are we not talking? Why are we not saying anything? Why does it feel like, like, I would be like, how are you with somebody but not talking? But I think I got to the point where I'm just comfortable in my skin and comfortable with how I am. So I don't need that constant validation. You know what I mean? Like nothing wrong with, with needing to hear the words like I love you or I care or I miss you or I need you or you know constant validation but sometimes just spending the time with the person really can just satisfy the need and especially these word searches these adult word books are very clutch because they make you think they make you relax and for me I need the large print <laughs> so the print I have is like jumbo jumbo size but it's relaxing and I feel like I've had different conversations with like my community, with my Bible study group, with friends, different people, different age groups, and as well as different males and females. And everybody kind of really has a love language that they either know about or they just don't want to admit because nobody really wants to admit. A lot of people I've talked to said, "Oh yeah, no, I'm not needy. Oh, I don't want to. I don't need to hear all the time. Like I'll see you when I see you." But sometimes you might need that just words of affirmation. It doesn't have to be the "I love yous" or coming off needy it could just be like you're appreciated when is the last time somebody told you that you're appreciated i couldn't tell you the last time somebody told me that and not to be like extra but just sometimes hearing that what you're doing with whatever you're doing in life matters and what you're doing with whatever you're doing is working or or you're they see you're working hard and the struggle and the time and energy that you're putting in sometimes hearing that you're amazing or you got this or you're appreciated really does go a long way or you know I validate you because sometimes we get so busy with um, going and going and going and just doing things and trying to get to um, you know the end goal we kind of forget about hey wait a minute I didn't take a chance to like congratulate myself and not like in like a cocky kind of way like I'm bad doing all this other stuff but like if you t made a goal for today or for like for like the month to learn like for me what I did was I wanted to teach myself how to read music and that took time because I'm a very impatient person but also I always struggled with reading music because I just I couldn't understand it so like I've mentioned before I would play by ear and my goal was okay I'm going to teach because I have a saxophone I'm going to teach myself how to read um, music so I can play music on a saxophone and incorporate it in my DJing with the music that I make so I was determined to learn how to read music and I'm not like a huge expert, expert, but I can read the simple notes and things like that. And then once I started practicing and learning and practicing and practicing and practicing, reading the notes was kind of like playing the piano, but it took time and it took determination. And I was proud of myself. I even said, oh, I'm proud of you, Lana, because knowing how I am, when things get too complicated or things get too hard, or it seems like it's going to be a lot of work. I just give up on it because I'm like... I don't have time for this. Let me go do something that I'm comfortable with. And I've realized with, even during COVID, because a lot of things were being put, in, put into perspective and a lot of things were eye-opening that we get comfortable, but we like to stay where we're comfortable. We don't want to go that next step. We don't want to go that next level of, hey, I can do something that I've always wanted to do. Now that I have the time, what's stopping me? Failure. And I was always afraid to do things that were like, I guess, um, not my forte. Because I was always so hard on myself because I'm like, oh my God, if I can't do this, I'm going to fail. And then like, what's the point? And then I'm like, you know, I wasted my time with doing this. But it was a challenge for me to push myself to get to that next step of, hey, now I can read music and play songs that I like because I forced myself and I pushed myself to, you know, step out of those boundaries of just being comfortable and being like, oh yeah, man, I wish I could play the saxophone. I wish I could play the piano, but I can't read music okay, you can't read music, but do do something. What are you going to do to get you to be able to read music? This is one day at a time. And after a while, I'm like, this is really easy. And then it became fun. That's the whole thing about doing things that's not in your comfort zone, pushing yourself to get out of that um, failure mind state and then get into the point where like, oh, this is actually kind of fun. I can see myself doing this long term. And for me, I just fell in love with the saxophone. I didn't think I would because it's a, is it a brass or a woodwind? I can never get those two. Is it a brass? I don't know. It's an instrument. <laughs> and 
I just fell in love with the saxophone. It's just relaxing. It's 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 sweet. It's sassy, and it's just like a beautiful instrument. I I don't know. I just feel like I just connect with it. You know, you just get connect with something. Um, I just feel like I I connected with it. So I say a lot to say before I go on a rant about my saxophone. Having one or two of the love languages, whether it be the acts of services or or words of affirmation or gifts, is cool. But also own that like if you want to hear the words versus them just showing that they love you like if they're taking out the trash or or helping you pay bills or doing the laundry or washing the dishes then let that let your significant other know that hey I want to hear these words as well as you doing these things and also it has to be a give or take it can't just be them doing all the work and you just want to hear everything but you're not really doing anything you know what I mean like not to sound like like a dick but it's just like if you want to hear the words what of affirmation what are you also doing for them you know what i'm saying like you know what have you done for me lately it goes both ways it can't just be the guy or girl if you're with girls the the partner always doing everything and then you're mad because you're not getting everything that you need like it doesn't work that way you kind of like have to be like okay if I'm a person who likes to hear the words and you're a person who is um, acts of service, how do we come together? How do we come to a middle ground that benefits both of us? So like if you're a person who wants to hear the I need you's and I miss you's and you're amazing and all those other words and the other person is like, well, I like when you rub my back or I like when you pop up at work or you know, I like when you send me little voice notes here and there. Then, okay, we both do that. So it it, it tickles both our needs. It can't just be, well, I need this, that, this, that, and a third. And they're doing all that. But then when it comes time for them to get what they want, the partner, you're a ghost. It doesn't work that way. And it's not fair because so many people give, 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 give. And then they want so much in return. But... The other person gets so comfortable with you always being the one to do, you know, um, most of the work, majority of the relationship and the majority of the work in the relationship that they're like, well, why would I do all this if they got me? Why would I show them this if I know they're going to pick up the rest of it? And that's like a balance. It's really a balance to really of depending on the person you're with. It really is how long you've been dating and it really is what you're willing um to like tolerate because some people are willing to tolerate you know things to a point without saying anything and then there are others who will stop it off at the rib and be like you're not gonna do all this stuff but there has to be um a middle ground for a balance to work in any relationship whether you've been together for five years whether you've been together for 10 years whether you're just starting out everything has to find a balance and that takes time you can't find your niche and groove in like two months and people always say you know you can't you don't really know somebody until you live with them but then even when you live with them they don't really show you really who they really truly are unless they know that they got you you're locked down or they know you're not going anywhere and people can really show people can really hide a facade about what they really are about when they know that they got a good they're not going to like really show you who they really are, that they're vulnerable or that they're needy or that they're clingy or that they are damaged because who wants to show that with a person that they know might use that to their advantage? You know what I'm saying? Like sometimes we put up this wall, put up this facade of just being, you know, a bad bitch or a bad guy or or we got it all and this, that, and the third. But actually we're really just vulnerable human beings. We all are vulnerable human beings. We just don't want to admit it. When you get to the point where you can be okay with saying, hey, I have scars. Hey, I wear my feelings on my sleeves. Or, hey, um, I'm damaged. That's okay. Everybody has something that isn't perfect. Because nobody really is perfect, even though we all want to be. But you really can't be perfect because everybody has imperfectities, impurities. I lost a train of thought. Everybody has unique qualities that aren't 100% there. So sometimes we have to just be vulnerable there's nothing wrong with being vulnerable and society and social media kind of puts it as if oh my god if you're vulnerable if you're a man and you're crying or if you're a man and showing your feelings um then you're vulnerable and you're crazy and that's gay no it's nothing wrong with being open and honest with yourself 
first and foremost, and being open and honest with your, your significant other or others because that's the only way you can really get to the root of the problem and really get to the root of of being one with that person because really everybody really wants to be connected with their significant other mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. You don't really just want one of the four. You kind of want it all because then you really can be yourself around that person if you're just connected physically like with the physical touch that's cool but then do you really want a meaningful relationship or do you want just the physical touch like if you want like more than just physical then you have to dig deeper you have to get to that next level of okay hey let's have a conversation about how i'm feeling today yes i may look fine but i'm really not okay or hey how was your day going um what's been going on with you Sometimes we're so busy with just the physical aspect of things. Sometimes we're just so busy with making sure that the other person is good with gifts and things and stuff like that, that we don't really sit down and really have a conversation about, hey, how are you really feeling? What's really going on? How was your day really today? Um, How did you sleep? Like even just asking somebody, how did they sleep? That can just lead from one thing to the next. It could be like the smallest little Um, my new conversations or questions that you think that nobody really cares about that can lead to something else or even saying something like I said earlier telling that person um, hey I know you've been busy I know you've been doing a nine to five and plus taking care of this and doing that but you are appreciated and I respect you and I value you even words like that can really set the mood and set the tone and change people's perspectives on things because you never know with your words are powerful and you never know with what you're saying could actually help that person um, or change that person's mind about what they were previously thinking about, you know. Definitely a call, a phone call also can help. Like a random phone call throughout the day. Just saying, hey, just checking on you. Hope you're doing well. And that's it. That can really, really make somebody's day. And I always have said before that words are powerful. And I always felt like even growing up when I was younger in school, because I was, I was a quiet person, and I would see people pick on, I guess, the nerds or the different type of people. And I'm like, words are powerful. And your demeanor is powerful, too. And the things that you bestow on these young people and making fun of them for liking science or eating glue or making fun of them for being different really does have a long-lasting effect on people with mental space and mental capacity. And people don't really realize that like the words that they're saying really can hinder or alter that person's future and really affect their um i don't want to say vulnerability but affect their psyche because you know you're young you're thinking oh my god this person's making fun of me for like liking science so i'm not going to show anything and i'm just going to not pay attention in school i'm going to fail or this person is making fun of me for being um big you know large so i'm going to be self-conscious about my body going forward because everybody says i'm so big like words like that like you're fat or you're ugly or you're stupid or you're weird or you're a nerd do um affect the person even though it may not show it right away but it does affect them in the long run and people say oh your nerds are cute or people say oh being being fat is is beautiful now but when we were younger you were just like oh wow am i really fat or am i really a nerd or really what i'm doing is it really important like oh you want to be a fashion designer or oh you want to be an artist well yeah, you keep you keep that dream. You wouldn't be an actress? Oh, oh yeah, oh, okay. Versus, oh my God, you're in finance? Oh my God, you're a banker? Oh my God, you sell real estate? Like, small little words like that. Like, oh, okay. Oh, you do that? Or what is it? Oh, that's a hobby. Versus, it's really your passion. It's really your dream. It's really what you want to do. And those words like, oh yeah, your, your hobby, you know, will only get you so far. It won't pay bills, blah, blah, blah. And that constant devalidation i think that's not even a word i think i just made it up (laughs) constant devalidation um over and over and over again from growing up or even as an adult really can affect how you look at yourself how you feel about yourself how you you carry yourself and as well as words in previous relationships too that are not healthy that are being thrown at you all the time really can dictate your next relationship and really can dictate how you feel about yourself especially when it comes to being taken advantage of you know being lied to you know being hurt or just you know having your time wasted because that's like the most precious thing 
to not have wasted <laughs> is your time, especially now during COVID, especially with all that's going on. It's it's just life is really just too precious to really have anything taken for granted, anything wasted because you never know what tomorrow brings. And I feel like having this conversation, even though it's been going on for more than COVID, but having this conversation about your love language or even doing this activity with your partner, doing this activity with your friends, doing this activity with whatever really can get a deeper, more in-depth um, conversation about what's really bothering you, what how you're really feeling. And again, it's active services, words of affirmation, giving gifts, quality time, and physical touch. And it's a great activity to do with your partner because you, you learn different things about them that you didn't know. Like, they might think that you like hearing these words, but you actually want just quality time. Like, you just want to spend time with them. But like, watch Netflix and chill. While they're watching Netflix, you're reading a book and being okay with that. You're comfortable with just being in their presence. And I feel, feel like that's like a beautiful thing when you can just be okay with no words, no talking, no whatever. Just you guys are in the same room but doing your own thing in the same space you're just physically enjoying being with that person like you don't need to go out you don't need to be bought you don't need to do whatever you just want to spend that time with that person because it's just you're so comfortable and happy with that person if it's giving gifts that's nice but you might think that they love these gifts giving but they actually just want words of affirmation like you don't know unless you really just talk with that person like you don't know unless you really understand that person what they're feeling and and what they want listening is different than hearing say that again when somebody is saying something you listening to what they're saying is completely different than actually hearing what they're saying if they're if you're noticing that your partner girl or guy is saying the same thing how they're feeling about something numerous times and maybe that is something to look at because whether it's like I said active services they want to hear words of affirmation they want quality time sometimes like I said it could be the simplest thing that you're just or even physical touch that you're just giving them a massage after a long day's work that does go far because it's showing that you're listening to how they're feeling and it's showing that you can be there for them in more ways than one massages foot rubs or even just like I said, holding hands, or even if like you're not feeling well, tummy ache or whatever, you're lying on the couch and then they come over and then you put your head in their lap and they're just rubbing your back, like things like that. It's just small little things that that your partner does for you that you're like, oh hey, this is nice. <laughs> they're listening. I can actually deal with this and I can actually, you know, express how I feel and express myself without having. You know, like, without having it turn to argument or without having it be like, oh, you're complaining or you're too emotional or, or things like that. And I feel like once we get to that point of, oh, I can say these things and we can have a, a conversation without it going left and we're still fine. And I feel like having these different love languages, because it can be one of them, it can be like mine, which is two out of the five, or it can be all five of them. You can have all those things. You can like... um acts of services by that person like I said doing small little things you can also want to hear the stuff you can also want to be giving gifts or getting gifts small little things not like materialistic things but just cute small little things you can also like like I said want the quality time and you want the physical touch it doesn't always just have to be relations like I said it could just be just being in their presence and I feel like having this conversation and, and, and having different love languages and understanding your partner um, and understanding how they're feeling and what they're feeling and when they're feeling is a big thing because it gets to a deeper conversation and as well as it it can turn into something beautiful when you are on the same page with your partner because if you're on different pages it's like a whole different thing and love languages the quiz is also a quiz too you can take with what your love languages is love languages and I think that's a cool thing too because like I said before you really learn something about the partner you really learn something new um or you can find out that you don't like it they, your partner doesn't like any of these things they just like you they just want you they could be they hate action they don't want to hear no words they don't want you to be touched it could just be whatever but you won't know that until you get to 
get to that level of just having that conversation respectively and having that conversation that digs deeper than just what's on the surface. You know what I mean? And I feel like sometimes we get lost in checking in on our partners, checking in on our friends, checking in on our family. Not that you would do this love language with your family, but sometimes it's okay to check in on your partner in the relationship versus just thinking that everything's okay. Because sometimes they won't say what's bothering them because either they know that it might lead to an argument or they know that it won't lead anywhere. It could you they 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 might feel that you're not listening or that you won't listen to this, or that you'll just brush it aside. But if you do take that step, take that leap to just say, Hey, I'm just checking in on you. How is everything? Not about the relationship, but checking in on that person who you're with in the relationship. Just like, Hey, is everything okay? How are you doing today? type of thing. You never know what that what that conversation or where that conversation can lead to. You never know if they really are going through something that they may not even know themselves that something was a trigger that happened two months ago and they've been waiting for you to bring it up so you never know so just wanted to say my two three cents on the love language and that's that but yes this is a short episode quick little special cute pop-up episode but this was episode 54 what is your love language i'm lana And you can find me on Spotify, Apple, SoundCloud, YouTube, and TikTok. (laughs) At Lana Lana and Pure. Spotify, TikTok, Apple, YouTube, Instagram, Lana and Pure. And I hope you guys enjoyed the five different love languages. It's act of service, words of affirmation, giving gifts, quality time, and physical touch. But I hope you guys are enjoying your day. And do something today that you didn't do the day before. And have a great day. Peace.